Well, here I am again, uh, Sunday, got that beautiful groat. I mean, fantastic. And funny enough, just around here, because uh, that's where I'm at. Obviously, this is where I'm going to be. Um, and uh, I've just been over this area, and uh, I've had a few 303s, you know, usual rubbish. Uh, but my first nice little find of the day. Here it is, a nice little veiled head Victorian penny. Well, I've been going for about three hours now. I uh, had a lovely lunch, everything's nice. Uh, dug up a couple of Georgian smoothies, um, and uh, I'm right down the other end of the pasture, just wandering around. And uh, I think I've got myself something else on my little wish list, or bucket list. I've had a few thimbles. I've had a 17th century thimble, but I think here I've got an earlier one. It, it's so green as well, you know, that gives it away. And it's that, that sort of shape like a beehive. Let's see. Okay, now that gave a lovely crisp sort of high 70s signal. I'm running my machine on um, 80 on the, um, on the sensitivity or the gain. And uh, look at that. There's a bit of an impression. It just fell off. I was going to live dig this one. I thought, no, don't be silly. <laughs> oh, look. And it's complete. Is it complete? Uh, it's a bit squashed. Not bad though. Look at that. That is that is a medieval beehive thimble, isn't it? Oh, wonderful. Let's get a little clean up. And there you are. Um, conveniently, in every one of these fields, there's obviously a drinking trough. And I've just given this a lovely clean up. Look at that. That's definitely a medieval beehive thimble. It's just a little bit squished on there, just on that side, but really. Oh, I'm very, very happy. This field has done it again. Um, I'm not exactly sure from what sort of period. We're talking medieval. Um, you know, the styles, I know I've got some in books. Haven't really looked at them before because, well, haven't need to because I haven't found one. And now I have. So uh, tonight's evening research with a few glasses of claret and I will have the answer. Very happy indeed. What a find. Well, here we are again um, after yesterday's beehive thimble. Now, uh, I had done a bit of a research last night, and the first one's around 1100, and you get the open, so it's like just a ring, so the thumb would actually protrude past, and uh, little dots around it. I've actually got a reproduction one that I got from a British Museum on a school trip. Anyway, around 1300, they become domed, solid cast bronze, but they've got a hole in the top, and they think that's because a cord would have gone through, so it would have been you know, hanging from a girdle. We didn't have big shoulder bags and stuff there, and everything was suspended. Then around 1400, you lose the hole, and that's mine. So it's late medieval uh, and an absolute delight. So happy with that. Anyway, um, first dig, first swing. Uh, I think I've got a bit of a key here. Yeah, I think that's a key, part of. Yeah, you know, anybody else got any ideas? Be nice to hear from you, but that's a not bad start. Um, hopefully Paul will be here uh, in about an hour or so. Uh, so, <laughs> let's see if I can find something really nice before he turns up. Well, it's coming up to two o'clock and I'm back down where I found that thimble yesterday. Not far, actually, just about over there. Um, and Paul's with me, he arrived earlier. He's over the other side of the track on the uh, barley field where I found my Saxon fibula and he's found his um, Roman silver. It's a bit claggy over there, so I wish him luck. Um, anyway, I just had a cracking signal, 72, and it said 12 inches down. That's pretty deep, but this is so wet. It's really getting, um, anyway, just before that, pinpointer got a bit wet yesterday and it's lost its sensitivity. Well, number four, it's just barely picking it up. So um, had to take that apart tonight, give it a dry. So I'm having to be old school on this. And, uh, and there you are. As I did, I just thought it was just a plain disc and I gave it a bit of a clean up in the, uh, the sheep uh, drinking trough. And there is a Tudor rose. Yep, and on the other side, well, you can just see just make out a thistle. So that, I believe, is a James the First half groat, as I've had one similar a couple of years ago. So there you are. Third hammer of the year. Fantastic. Well, anyway, um, back out on the fields and I've been going for about three hours. It's a lovely day um, somewhere else. Uh, it's uh, where well, you can see, it's the first time I detected in snow, I think it's actually the first time because it only started two years ago. Um, anyway, uh, and I've been digging up 303 shells one after another, must have been 20. And I was only just thinking the rule of 20 because normally that's about how many things you need to dig up before something decent comes up. But you're never thinking about it. I thought, here we go, another one. No, 
It's a complete crowfoot bell. Second one this year. Fantastic. There it is. Isn't that lovely? Now it's actually, um, it's not a drilled hole. So it's a slightly later one where they worked out how to cast um, the suspension loop. So it's most probably 17th century, 1600s, Tudor Stuart period, which is the period I get a lot of stuff up on these bottom fields. And there they are, absolutely complete. It looks smooth. It doesn't look like it's got a sunburst design um, or a uh, fish scale, which is what you normally see. But I'll clean that up tonight and hopefully, ring, ring, ring. Brilliant. And that was indeed the end of the hunt. Um, just after that, of course, I'd taken my gloves off and I didn't realise just how cold it was out there. My body was fine, but my fingers, once I got my gloves back on, they started to burn and it was just horrible. So it was a dash back to the car. But, um, you know, a couple of short hunts and uh, three lovely things. Gorgeous beehive thimble, uh, a nice James I half groat. And after 350, 400 years, the bell rings again. Yes. Thanks for watching. See you in the spring. Thank <laughs> you.